Hello and welcome back to the Sh Museum. Today we're going to be heading over to Topaz Detailing where my AMG GT Black Series is currently getting PPF but also in particular to talk about cleaning, cleaning products, the cleaning corner that we're intending to set up over there. We've got the wash bay area outside and what we're going to be doing to keep all of the Schmeemobiles looking pretty in the future. I can't wait until the GT Black Series in the new solar beam paint is back here side by side with that thing in viola bast those two colors are going to look insane together but also today i want to touch on the sls amg black series which you will notice is not here at the moment there's something that car is having some work done with and i'm hoping it's going to be back before the tour that we've got coming up that i need to tell you about as well i also want to show you something really very cool a piece of memorabilia that uh, somebody kindly gave me recently that will be here in this museum which has a bit of a personal story for me. So we've got quite a few things to touch on. Very shortly, we're gonna be picking one of the cars. I don't even know yet which car we're gonna take. And that I guess is half of the fun of being here at the Museum to go over to Topaz to see the progress with the GT Black Series and the PPF. But before that, a few things to touch on. Firstly then, where is the SLS Black Series? Well, at the moment, it actually went back to avant-garde automotive because there was one more sensor we needed to change after everything that happened earlier in the year. So we thought that was gonna be it. It was trailered over by Tony Turbo Transport and it was supposed to be an hour or two and then it would come back. But unfortunately, while it was there, they found a whole load of sludge or grease from the drive shaft at the rear. Fortunately, those parts are available, but long story short, they need to be replaced. Another couple of thousand pounds to fix that and, um, Yes, not ideal, but that is part, I think, of owning a car that is now seven years old and driving it a lot at 200 miles an hour, doing Nürburgring laps with it. And it's basically part and parcel of life if you're going to use a car to this extent. So that's where the SLS Black Series is. I'm just praying it's going to be back here in time for the tour. Yeah, fingers, toes and everything are crossed. But let me go show you this new item here. This is something that connects a lot to me. Some of you might know, if we rewind back, one of my favorite cars back in time, in fact, back in 2009, 2010, was the Aston Martin 177. So much so that I actually ran a website indexing all of the cars around the world as they were being delivered. I had my V8 Vantage Roadster, the car that I own again now, and I was absolutely obsessed with it. I'm British, James Bond, Aston Martin, everything really, really cool. And I've actually seen, I think, 26 177s with my own eyes which is quite extraordinary having never been at the factory when they were being built or anything like that. But what we have here is something truly special. This is effectively the 177 owner's prospectus. There were not many of these. They went to each of the 177 customers and a very kind gentleman, knowing that I was a big fan of the car, actually invited me to have this, something I'm going to treasure. But I want to show you what we have inside. And this one was actually used for uh, customers to be shown the car itself. But what we have in here, in this beautifully presented document, are effectively a series of images and the story, the photos, the original sketches of the car. As I said, one of the most beautiful cars that has ever existed, the golden ratio, all of the proportions of this thing. It's, it's one of those cars where it's not necessarily the best to drive. There are a few things about it that are a little bit clunky, the gearbox, for example, but it is spectacularly beautiful. And this is the kind of stuff that I've accumulated a lot of myself. And one of the fun things about having this venue is that all of these things can come out of storage and can start being on display. But seeing the process through the clay models, for example, working out all the different components, the bodywork itself, the uh, carbon fiber, obviously, that it features pretty much extensively the engine bay, that glorious V12. I love this kind of thing. And I mean, I'm, I'm lucky actually to have a few of the equivalents of this for some very cool cars, like the 918 Spider one I actually have as well um, from Porsche. But this goes all the way through to something I want to show you at the end with this car, one AML, Aston Martin Lagonda. These pictures and actually a video on the Shmi 150 channel from 2010 of that day, that car in that spot, um, way back in time where a lot of this kind of all began. So this is, to me, absolutely stunning. It's a priceless piece, you could say, of memorabilia that I'm going to treasure and enjoy for sure, looking at 
of the 177. And I want to show you more of these kind of things that I'm lucky to have accumulated and to have built up here at the garage, but you see, even down to just having the Aston Martin Wings badge on the front of it in this portfolio. I love that kind of stuff. Anyway, I guess we need to go and pick a car and head over to Topaz to go see how the GT Black Series is doing. We need to pick a car, but before we do, let me explain the cleaning corner and what we're doing here. At the moment, we have our hose, some rags, pressure washer, and just random stuff all in a cardboard box, which is of course not a permanent solution, but this area where we have the EV charger, where the Taycan is charging up will always be the dirty corner. You know, when a car has just come in, when it's been out, when the weather's horrible because we're in the UK and that's what happens before you enter into the main hall. And the idea, if you remember from the plans, is that here we're gonna have like a gantry it's gonna be themed like a motorsport venue. So you're gonna come in and drive and enter into the venue. So this area, what we want to do is set up a cleaning corner. So the idea is to make something here that can house all of this and to incorporate the new Topaz products that we're gonna pick some of up when we get there today. For the time being, this is where on camera, I need to pick a car. And I know this is very much first world problem, but I don't know what car to take right now. A mixture of cars that are clean. A part of me wants to take the STO, but with no PPF on the STO, that would be the worst possible idea. It would also be a really bad idea to take the Senna or the GT because luggage space is at a minimum and we probably need to pick up some stuff. LT or G GT8, GT8 could be an option. GT8 or G would be too easy. Mm, Heritage RS hasn't actually been out for ages. Hasn't been out for ages. I'm gonna take the Focus RS Heritage. Decision made, let's get that ready and get over to Topaz. As we make our way then in towards London, we'll go around the North Circular over to Topaz. One thing that's quite funny about this car is that despite the fact it's now over three years old, we've still got the protective sticker on the infotainment screen. And that's one of those things that just becomes almost a bit of a running joke that when you've left it on, you might as well just keep it on. I'm driving in sport mode at the moment, sport driving mode, because even with the stock exhaust, you still get some nice bangs out of it. Actually, not so many right now. Oh yeah, a couple of small sounds. It sounds relatively quiet when I've got used to the Miltech exhaust that we have on the GI Yaris. I've done 5,442 miles in this car, which is not a lot, obviously, for three years in a Focus RS. But you have to remember how special this thing is. I think to most eyes, it's just an orange Focus, maybe a Focus ST or something like that, but it's one of only 50. They have very high values, significantly higher values, actually. But there we go, than they cost from new. It's just a really cool thing. I love driving it. I haven't actually driven it for a very long time. A very long time. I, I couldn't really tell you when I last drove it, probably at the start of the world shutting down in spring last year, which is mad to say, other than just moving it around and short little things. Yeah, that's crazy. Anyway, we've just had a, a heads up from the guys at Topaz that progress is being made. They've already done quite a bit of the PPF on the car. So when we get over there, We'll see exactly how it's going and see a bit of the process. Back at Topaz then and here with Nabil. It's been a while. It's been a long time. I've missed you. <laughs> it's good to be back. It's good to be back. Of course, we've caught up a few times, but I think we haven't actually filmed together for no, ages. But you're doing wonderful things on the Topaz channel. Yeah, I know. Yeah, because I mean, you, every time you're here, <laughs> I'm not here. And then every time I'm here, you're not here. So yeah, it's been great. But no, we've been very busy. The, the Topaz channel is going really well. And also, obviously, the sites are going crazy well as well. So we've been, I've been busy. More gray hairs probably than last time. Your, your viewers are going to notice I have more gray hairs. But we've got some exciting new products to talk about in a moment. Firstly, yep. though, of course, this car came here when it was in its original graphite grey Magno, the specification in which I took delivery of it, because Remember? we did, or I guess I should say, you guys did the yep. PPF on all the vulnerable parts. Yep, yep. Things Which like... Carbon, very expensive to fix if it goes yes. wrong. So I think it was carbon splitter. We actually put some on here, but that had to come off to be relacquered as part of the paint process. Yep. Mirror caps, roof, wing, diffuser. Side sills. Side sills, absolutely. All of those parts, because I wanted to do some running in mileage before it went for the paint work to make sure that everything mechanically was good with the car. It's quite something to behold, isn't it? I mean, it's the, <laughs> to be honest, it looked epic before. It looked very, very menacing. 
Now it just looks like it's a Shmi mobile. <laughs> now it looks like it's one of your cars, you know? I, I keep thinking it's like a bumblebee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, <laughs> you said it, I didn't say it. Yeah, this yeah, thing yeah. is going to buzz around everywhere. Yeah, but no, but the color, honestly, it's a difficult color to paint. Um, yeah. And obviously now we've had a chance to go through and have a look at it and everything else like that. The color is just fantastic. Yeah, so Amazing basically color. I've challenged the guys here to do a full inspection of it effectively yes. To, yes. to make sure that we know exactly how the finished result is because multi-layer paint, a very bright color. It's literally a recipe for yeah, yeah. the hardest possible really thing for Chartwell to have managed to make A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And you know, when we were going through the car, we had to look at all the aspects. You know, we know, you know, we know what to look for and not to look for. <laughs> we know what, what would bother you or what wouldn't bother you. So, so we'd go through everything and any, anything that needed rectified, obviously we'd rectify ourselves here and just get it sorted out. With, we're a bit OCD as you know, well, that's, with that's, everything. That's why we're here at Topaz. Yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, obviously as part Part of the paint process, Chartwell did a very, very labor-intensive polishing I'm sure. job over the entire I'm sure. car. And it looks incredible. And the amazing thing here is obviously you've now had the full team working on it. Yes. And the progress yeah. is extraordinary. It's been a couple yeah. of days. Yeah, yeah. I think there are only a couple of panels remaining. I know, because obviously I put quite a few people on it because I know that you've got a trip <laughs> coming up. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't see this with this paint job going out and not being protected. So yeah, so to be right. honest with you, I mean, we, yeah, we, so the front bumper we did, yep. it's been done now. Headlights, I think, were already done from before. That's right. Wing hasn't been done yet. Uh, bonnet, honestly, isn't it weird that till today I have to go around and put my finger and see if I can feel anything to be able to tell if it's got film on it or not. It's embarrassing, yeah. but it's a good thing. No, it's, it's the exactly what it's all about. I mean, this is the, the beauty of it, right? Is yeah. that you don't, with you your templates, and this is the thing, and yeah. Topaz templates are the best in the business because yeah, thank you. <laughs> you create Thanks. everything. Yeah, and, and like you know what? It's, it's, it's like a tailor-made suit. That's the way I yes. look at it, right? You can either go to go get a sort of a regular suit or you can get a tailor-made suit, so specific to exactly your body shape, shape and things. And that's why yeah. I like doing it that way. But yeah, the door's on. Carbon yeah, obviously so is on from the last time. If I'm not mistaken, it's wing, bonnet, yes. this panel, the main rear wing and yes. the boot lid. Ex yep, no, the it? boot lid is not on yeah. yet. And, and that's it, on and then yet. it'll be the badges afterwards. Yeah, exactly. And then obviously rear bumper has just been put on as well. So we're, we're going at a steady speed <laughs> to get there. And, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get there. I think we'll, before our deadline, we will get it sorted by then. And the uh, most important thing is that we get everything down. Because I know with this paint job, honestly, if you get a chip or anything oh, on no, this, don't. Yeah. if you have to try to repaint that, forget it. Honestly, it's... <laughs> so when you're playing with multi-layered paints, if you ever do get a scratch or a chip, it's not a case of just repainting a door. Yeah. It's a full blended. It will never be the same. No. So, so even if you were to get, I mean, even if you're trying to use the same paint, it will be slight variation as well, yeah. because depending on who's spraying it, how many layers, how heavy the, the, yeah. the layer is. The temperature. So the temperature, the temperature, the temperature makes food. a big difference. <laughs> Everything <laughs> makes a difference. So with this, yeah, you want a triple layer paint. Yeah. So I'm a big campaigner for PPF from my own experiences. And we've shared some of these things before when things have gone slightly wrong or whatever. Yeah. Stone chips, small scratches, cars at, an, at events. But when you have a color like this, it is more yeah. important than ever <laughs> to get it right. And um, it's definitely, I'm, I'm just glad to see it here and that we yeah. managed to put the film on it for the whole car before you're going out on your mega road trip. Yeah, so. the big one coming up, which I'll talk more about very shortly. Yeah. But we've got something else here we need to discuss. I know, and it's something that has been a labor of love of mine for many, many years. And you've seen me go through I've this I've seen stage. the development of this, the Topaz car care. Yes. Which you yeah. should show us through because yes. I'm sure I'm going to end up with a few yeah, of you will do, the you will do. So, of my cars. So the funny thing is we, I, I, started, I started off with the product first, which is the important part, yeah. right? And then the case afterwards. The products were actually the longest part to do, yes. but they're ready before the cases. Okay. So, <laughs> so it was yes. a bit of a, the timing was off. But yeah, this so basically is cool. this is what you get. Essentially, it's, it's everything that I feel you need to wash the car after you've treated the car with Topaz. Yep. So anything that you require to be able to get the car to look like this through your road trip or if you're at your house, yeah. whatever it is, this is the pack that basically will do it for you. The, now, the full set. The full set. You get obviously the products here. These are all individual products. Now, just to talk about the products, each one, uh, which I didn't know this before when you're making products, is that you have ingredients and then you have ingredients. It's like going to the supermarket <laughs> and getting the organic ingredient versus the non-organic. Okay. Uh, I didn't quite appreciate the fact that it makes such a difference to the okay. quality of the finish. Yeah. So I had to go through all the different ingredients to find out exactly which aspect of that ingredient makes a difference and what, what percentage. Yeah. Honestly, 
It's like, <laughs> it's so hard. It's so hard. But at the end of it, when, because that's why it took us so many years to get Well, yeah, I know you were keeping on going until you had exactly the Topaz level. Yeah, like, yeah, it wasn't exactly. Just make some products. That's right. The Topaz. That's right. And then I started making, then I thought, okay, we got to this stage. We got the, the finish to be great. Then have a bit of fun with it. Yeah. So, for example, the quick detailer that, uh, that we have, I put my, the scent of my perfume in it, which is okay. a Ventus Creed. Okay. So it's, a, it's a Creed Aventus. I was like, Let's put some of that in there. So every time I'm using it, it reminds me of the... So it's just, these are small details, obviously, that yeah. are like the sort of little Easter egg that I decided to do with these products. Yeah, that's cool. But, but the performance are, is basically what we use here. So yeah. with all the years that we've been having experience of what's the right thing to use and what's the wrong thing to use, yeah. we thought, do you know what? Let's start, let's, let, let's get the product down to a T. And then even, I mean, again, things like this, which again, I never thought that would be so difficult to sort out, but things even like the microfibers. Each microfiber that is here, uh, you have different suppliers and different texture and different grades of microfiber. Yeah. And feel that, just have, have it. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I see? was expecting soft, but that's really soft. No, that's what I mean. So, and, and then the pile, the, the difference in pile is, yeah. is, is different. The texture, the way that the actual uh, fibers of the microfiber are different in each one. Yeah. So again, this is one of those things where I think actually I hijacked your camera a while ago and I started yeah. talking about microfibers years ago yeah. in one of the videos. I remember videos. it very well. Yeah, yeah. So then uh, since then, I've been obsessed with trying to find the right microfibers. Yeah. And yeah. We and got now you offer idea. them in the kit. We got there in the kit. Something yeah. that you basically, I mean, when it's zipped back yeah. up, that just yeah. fits yeah. into the boot of the car. And That's it. That's the whole point. And then, you, and then you have this, which actually my, uh, my kids want to actually use for their bath towels. <laughs> yeah, the, soft, <laughs> the softest possible drying towels. Yeah, yeah because yeah, again, feel, feel that. That's, yeah. that's just, that, that's, just, that's the for me. The softest of soft drying Yeah, towels. and this is what you need because you need, when you're actually drying the car, any issues with, if, for example, when you're drying the car, you're going to have some dust particles landing on the yeah. vehicle anyway. And you want them to go into the pile rather than be on the surface of the paint. So yeah. rather than be on the surface of the cloth either. You need yeah, them to go you. in okay. and then you need to make sure you, ke you keep this maintained so you wash this yeah. regularly. Yeah. So this is, this is really the whole process, isn't it? It's as you have as your, your, your kind of motto, it's enhancing the car first, yep. protecting the car, and now yep. even maintaining. more by way of maintaining the car. That's right, yeah, exactly. And then that's the thing, that makes the biggest difference. So for me, I think if you get all those, the sections of our business rightly done, I mean, if it's done correctly, then you'll have a car that looks like this yeah. all the time. And it will stay looking you know? like this. Yeah. And I can tell you, fully PPF car to this done properly like this, wrapped around, tucked in, perfect templates with the right quality means a car that's easier to clean, a car that's easier to keep looking good yeah. down the line, a car yeah. that just shines forever. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're yeah. the prime candidate, right? <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. When I was doing my research and development, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna do stuff on Tim's car and he can just go and develop it for me. Because obviously, yeah, because the film was ours as well. So this is this yeah. has actually got the Topaz film on there. Yeah. So you're gonna be able to see that there is a difference in how it behaves over mm -hmm. the period that you're gonna have the car. Okay. So it's well, a the cool period thing. that I'm gonna have this car is probably infinite. Yes. I don't see this car ever going anywhere. Yes. After of the kind of attention that's gone into say, it already. considering what you've done to it. <laughs> and what's coming up with it. Um, but for now, it's really cool actually to see this coming to life. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. The, the full car care kit no, and, exactly. and all of the different, um, yeah. different parts of it. Because obviously yeah. I've been, we've been talking about this since you started it. And I know, yeah. And seeing all of this. I, love it. I just love the fact that I can actually see it now and look at it and go, yeah. and go you know what, put we this in that. your car. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it's been, it's been made. So I'm really, really happy with that. Well, I really think happy. it shouldn't be too long until all is finished. I'll probably pop back over yeah. when we get to that point. Exactly. But I'll call you <laughs> and say to you, it's ready. It's ready. Go we'll get go it. out for a yeah. drive. So exactly. stay tuned for that. We need to talk a little bit, though, about what we're going to be doing with this car next week. But thank you Ooh, very much. My pleasure. And, uh, Thanks, you guys. And yeah, it's good for you to have me back on here. I'm, I'm, enjoying, I'm enjoying talking to you about the car, and I'm glad that I'll get to see you as well. And we'll probably chat now for the rest of the day about it. Welcome to London in the afternoon and traffic jams. I feel like this is gonna be quite a long journey to get back from here as we go back around the North Circular. Not that it's a surprise at 5 p.m. in the afternoon. This is prime time for sitting in traffic. And obviously the last place you wanna be driving a car with a manual gearbox, but hey, I'm not complaining. And it is really interesting to think actually about this, the Focus RS versus the GI Yaris, which are two cars that cost exactly the same money, by the way. The standard blue Focus RS was £35,000. The GI Yaris circuit pack was £35,000. So the two cars are exactly the same segment. This was a little bit more because it's the Heritage and it has uh, the mount tune upgrade, the FPM 375, so 375 horsepower, more than 100 horsepower, more than the Yaris. 
and only four thousand pounds more expensive maybe at some point i need to do a drag race or a track back to back or even just a country lane back to back between the gi yaris and the focus rs i just like being back in this car and the subtlety of it if i can say that which is odd for a bright orange hot hatch it's just a cool thing i think it always will be especially if there's never another rs focus if this is the last one you know they've made the three different generations of them but this is effectively the final ultimate ford focus rs in effect and now it's sitting in traffic making its way back around london but perhaps i'll use it a little bit more as a daily coming up i think after driving the Taycan so much recently with the fuel and petrol issues that have been plaguing the United Kingdom, I've basically gone to the Taycan every day as my default method of transport. I think I might spend a bit more time back behind the wheel of the Heritage RS and just enjoy, you know, the fact that I still own and will own this car for the long term. Back at the Schmuseum and I've parked for the moment the Focus RS just here because we've been having a lot of calls recently to go through the designs and I'm going to show you at some point soon a very cool virtual walk around of what we're intending to do with the build in the garage here. But there's going to be basically a gantry, an entryway here into the garage. So we'll have effectively two parking spots there for the daily, the dirty, whatever it might be. And equally a dirty car, drying car, whatever it might be that's been washed outside. So I'm trying to work out this layout still and how exactly we're gonna finalize it. I know these are really insignificant details, but planning for the future, because this is of course going to develop into something really special over the years. I also think, after I said I should drive this car more, I'm gonna take it home later instead of the Taycan. So that's sitting on 100%, gonna leave it here. It will stay right there anyway, it's a good spot for it. And for the time being, I'm gonna daily drive the Focus RS because at the end of the day, that's basically what that car is for. Now I promised I would tell you a little bit more about this upcoming trip and fundamentally, where is the SLS? As we said, it's getting something fixed. The drive shaft, which I'm hoping is gonna be back in time. The GT Black Series will be finished a day or two before we need it as well. Those two will be joined by the C63 Black Series. Yes, all three of the Black Series models that I own and the support car, the G63, bit of an AMG thing. I thought about adding the Roadster, but I've done quite a few trips with this already. Two, in fact, this year over to Germany, so I don't think we're gonna be taking it, but we are gonna be taking the three Black Series and the G63 on the Black Series tour, unsurprising, I'm sure, from here over to Germany. We'll go via France, drive through Paris, we'll head over to Stuttgart, we'll go to Motorworld, we'll go to the Mercedes Museum, we'll go to AMG in a Falterbach. We will, of course, take the cars up the Autobahn to the Nürburgring, and then there'll be a little visit to Opus, probably for all of them, for something. I say that Opus did all the upgrades to the G, the C needs a few things looked at, the SLS could do with a few things being looked at, and the GT needs some upgrades. So that is currently the plan for the Black Series Tour in a couple of days time, which is gonna be fantastic. I've been pretty spontaneously putting that together. I think it was something I always wanted to do with the different Black Series models, and part of the reason, in fact, for purchasing the C63 Black Series in the first place. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the car, but, this trio of the cars, the trilogy, the latest three Black Series models, how much I've been involved in the GT Black Series from having the GTR, the Pro, the Roadster, of course the Black Series, doing the video with AMG, which was so cool when it was unveiled, the fun I've had with my SLS over the last year, just all of this coming together is culminating in a trip now with all of the cars to Germany, to the home of Mercedes-Benz, to the home of AMG, to the home of the Black Series, and I'm really excited about it. So we will be taking the Schmuseum on tour, I guess, a bit like the old Fuel Faction trips we did and the Ring Wing Ting that we did, in fact, two years ago. Obviously, there's been a bit of an absence of this kind of thing with the whole world and everything over the last two years, but at least now we're able to get back out on the road. It's going to be an awesome team outing with all of the guys. Um, some familiar faces coming back to join in the trip as well, plenty of whom you might have seen on the channel before now, plus some friends from the YouTube world also between the cars. So this is going to be really fun. I cannot wait. Um, I'm really excited to share it with you. Of course, mostly on the Shmi on 50 channel. Maybe we'll bring you a bit more behind the scenes on the Schmuseum, certainly about the prep, because there's a lot of preparation that's needed with each of the cars prior to a trip like this in terms of toll devices for different countries, in terms of documentation, particularly in the current world, the post-Brexit world, traveling across to the European Union, um, in terms of travel, in terms of what you need in the cars, in terms of how you plan a trip like this. So I'll try and bring you a bit more behind the scenes of that with the tour prep ahead of the 
adventure on the Schmuseum channel also. But I think for today, that is pretty much it. Awesome to be able to pick out some bits of memorabilia as always to share with you guys and to see the progress of the GT Black Series with Nabil over at Topaz. If you're not following their channel, do head over to the Topaz Detailing channel. There's lots of really cool stuff, things you probably don't know about the world of detailing cars, paint protection film, and plenty more. For today though, I think that's all from here at the Schmuseum. Until next time.